Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring out a bite-sized pieces. So today we've got a pretty interesting project to cover, and I think this is going to be one of the great ones, and I'll explain in a second. So uh, this all comes about from uh, an advancement or a story we had talked about a couple of weeks ago, where Charles Hoskinson, Hoskinson and IOHK came out and said, hey, uh, we are going to partner up with the uh, government of Ethiopia and provide digital ID through uh, ATLA to bring this to different parts or different countries in the continent of Africa. And they're going to partner up um, with a company called World Mobile to bring internet service and cellular service uh, to these regions, which are underserved and unbanked and everything else. And I, I, it, was a, it was a great story and we kind of glanced over it and really not too much came about it because it was just, it sounds great. And this was the actual article, uh, new, new partnership, Project aims to provide 5G internet access and give customers a blockchain-based platform they can use to verify their identity, digital ID. It also aims to bridge the gap between unbanked and financial products like credit, insurance, and loans. And this is a this to me initially sounded like a pretty great project. Uh, first of all, to uh, do good, and then also to do well, which are uh, two of the things I like to do <laughs> if, if I can get away with it. So when I took a deeper dive into it, this is the project itself. And we had a couple of people reach out to us uh, from World Mobile. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk to the CEO in a little bit. But I want to give you an overview about what this project is and why uh, I think it could be uh, something uh, big. So World Mobile, you have to understand, first of all, is that there is really two parts to what World Mobile, uh, not what they're doing, but how they're doing it. So first, they're trying to lay out infrastructure. And second of all, they're trying to build up blockchain, which is the world mobile token or WMT. So this is, I can pretty much sum it up all about like this. Um, they did a case study in a small village in Tanzania. And the, the question is, as you're looking at this video right here, how do you get mobile service to a remote fishing village in the middle of nowhere? Because it, it costs way too much money to do this uh, if you're a, a mobile carrier, and then these people, you know, they just, uh, they don't have the ability to have the basics of what we just say is like, you know, the, co the common state, which is cellular service and internet. So this is what World Mobile did. So there's the fiber optics they already have from their local partner. They can get a fiber optic out there, right? But the problem is, is how do you give it to every single house out there? Because it, it's not like, you know, setting up uh, internet service here in the States. So this is what they did. The fiber optic cable is already there, local partners. And then what they do is as it's coming forward, you're going to see this picture, this image come up in a second. And what this is, is as they're erecting it, there's two things. Let me blow this up so you can see it. You see right there on the left-hand side, you can't see my mouse, unfortunately, on top of the hut, those are solar panels. And then what they're erecting right there, as they're pushing this over, this is an air node. And what this is allows them to do is to uh, create internet service and cellular service in a mesh network because they're, they're going to erect a bunch of these throughout the village and it's going to create a mesh-like service. So here's the question then. So who is going to provide that? Who's going to buy those expensive solar panels and those AirPods and, and everything else? Well, uh, good news, or air nodes, excuse me. Good news is that World Mobile goes in there and says, look, we're going to provide this to you and you're going to use these services and we're also going to back it up uh, with blockchain which are with our world mobile token and we're going to have air nodes and earth nodes so it's really a twofer a, a two-part they do all the infrastructure and then they they lay out the blockchain so you can get services such as cellular internet uh, education and healthcare on the blockchain so i thought it was a pretty amazing thing and, and to me in my brain there's a couple of things first of all i think to myself well you know, why would you do that, first of all? Well, it's the same thing here in like the States or UK or Canada or wherever, wherever else you are. Usually for cable services, they lay all the fiber optics and they go all to the different houses and they do all that. And the reason is because they know, hey, later on you're gonna need this service and they'll provide that. So you're not paying for the initial setup uh, cost. Well, there's initial setup, you know, to your house, but there really isn't just to get the infrastructure in there. So it's the same thing uh, here with World Mobile. And what's great about that is that they're like, well, look, um, we can build this into uh, the infrastructure. And of course, because there's no banking services, because this is the underserved and the unbanked, we got you covered here with our world mobile token on the blockchain. So it's like a win-win for everybody. Let's just bypass 
the uh, junk banking sector, which uh, eats you up in fees and costs and everything else. And we'll just go right to blockchain. Sure, makes, uh, makes sense. So this is essentially uh, what it is in a nutshell. So I'm just gonna skip ahead to the case study. And this is what they talked about as far as that image we just saw in uh, uh, Tanzania. It was just a small fishing village, around 200 people. And they were able to connect everybody through uh, those air nodes and they made a, a mesh network of internet and cellular service. Makes sense, right? So uh, the local partner put in the, uh, the fiber optics, unlicensed spectrum connects to multiple air nodes, creating a mesh network. And this is Mickey Watkins, who we're gonna talk to in a little bit. Here's a CEO, he says, our solution will not only turn a profit for World Mobile, but the villages that connect themselves will also thrive. Because also on top of that, the, the solar panels that they give to these villages and to these areas, and as they expand, they're going to be able to use those solar panels to sell back electricity or provide electricity into those villages and those areas. So again, you're going to be able to uh, power up these uh, nodes and you're going to be able to give electricity to that area with these solar panels. And this is the same type of thing that you can see in a lot of different uh, places. I was just talking to a friend of mine. He said, you know, this, we did the same thing in Hawaii where they did a, a massive amount of solar panels and you were able to actually use that and then sell that those solar panels, that electricity back to the company itself. So I think that is pretty cool. And uh, to finish up, uh, the air nodes are owned and operated by the fishermen. And this is a, a dichotomy here. Those air nodes and those... Um, solar panels, they can be uh, by the local businesses, in this case, the fishermen, or it can be uh, obtained and run by the entire village. It is up to that area and how they want to do things. So I think it's a, it's a pretty democratic way to do these uh, uh, such, such, such things. You can earn rewards instantly for calls, texts, and data that run through the nodes, makes sense. And of course you get the digital ID, the, the fishermen of decentralized digital IDs, creating access to a, a bunch of services like loans, online banking, healthcare. And that's the thing. And this is the things I don't really think about because if I want to grow my business, I just go to the bank and just say, hey, I need a loan because I want to build, you know, an, another section to my business. Here, with that's really what, where, where things grow. I always like to not use my own money. <laughs> I just like to use other people's money for my businesses. And if you can't do that as a business owner, you kind of get stifled and it's much harder uh, to move ahead. Even if you're like a fisherman, you're like, hey, I got one net. I'd like to buy another net so I can double uh, my uh, my revenue. Uh, where are you going to get that as far as a loan? Well, here you go. And then um, the the case study goes on and says the fishermen now have access to Wi-Fi, connect their phones to the World Mobile Network, make it possible to learn with news. Using our app, villagers will be able to be on top of credit in local shops to make low-cost calls locally and internationally. And after a year, because this has been going on for quite some time, the local fishermen have grown their businesses, quintupled their profits, and tripled their shops uh, and bars. So this is essentially what they're doing. That is the infrastructure. Now let's talk about the actual token. This is world mobile token. And right now you, before I go on, I will just say this, if you're in the United States or in Canada, eh, it's going to be, uh, you're not gonna be able to do this, but as time goes on, I want to bring this to your attention now, because I think this could be something great later. Uh, other parts of the, of the world, you know, Australia and everything like that, uh, take a look at this. And, uh, you know, there may be some other ways for you to do it. But uh, as far as me as American, KYC AML, not allowed. But I do like this project. So there are two types of nodes. There are the air nodes we just talked about, you know, that which is for the local. Then there's the earth nodes. And the earth nodes, if, you, if you're aware of like how Theta works, you have your... Um, your, your, your small nodes, your uh, validators, and then you have like your enterprise, the ones that like, like Google has. Well, you're gonna be uh, the big guy. You're gonna be the earth node. So in the air nodes, they process, they get rewards through all the transactions. And then as an earth node operator, it's you get the, the rewards for transactions on the, on the uh, blockchain, as well as uh, the inflationary part of the token, but it is actually deflationary as time goes on. So in the beginning, just like everything, as the ones that get in early are the ones that are gonna be uh, sitting pretty nice uh, if you get in uh, at the uh, earliest of times. So as an Earthnode operator, you'll secure a network and earn WMT, World Mobile Token. And then what you can do with it, you can obviously stake it, 
Uh, you can transfer peer to peer online or make payments, and that will be the payment structure, World Mobile Token. And guess what? It's built on the uh, Cardano Foundation. So this will be a native token for Cardano. And you can cover calls, text, data usage, online services. So all that great stuff and looking pretty good. Here's the tokenomics. There's 2 billion max supply. I don't think that's uh, a, a lot to ask for considering the fact that you have 4 billion people who do not have access to cellular service and, and the internet. So this could be uh, massive. And that's the thing, like, like some of these projects, they're just so big, um, they're very ambitious. And if they take hold, I mean, watch out. So this is what's cool about it. We're, they're releasing 10% into circulating supply or 200 million only first. The rest will be released over 20 years. So it's not a bunch of people just ha hanging onto it and just dumping as time goes on. This is a real sustainable thing. And when we talk to Mickey, you're gonna see exactly why that is. So Mickey, the CEO. Uh, stake tokens to become an earth owner operator. You'll earn rewards on a daily basis on your honest participation. Do well, then do good. Or do well, then do good. Do good, then do well. Distribution breakdown. So here's how it all breaks down for the tokens. Remember, uh, it's 10% it's in the beginning and then it's released over 20 years. So the node operators, 29%. Co-founders, 19%. Again, over 20 years. Partnerships, private sale, early staking, operation fund, uh, so on and so forth. Advisors, 5.9. Community fund, too, and incentive rewards, 3%. So you can see it's pretty well broken down pretty simply. And then we've got uh, the inflation over time. Of course, in the beginning, when we talked about those earth nodes, we saw that uh, those are where the rewards come from. So in the beginning, it is uh, pretty high as far as inflation. But over time, over months, I mean, you see like it's very deflationary. So just be aware. You can pre-stake and get 10% extra. Uh, if you're into that, then you can actually do that. So sure. And then um, the team advisors, I'm going to get to that last, uh, the team. And I'm going to have Mickey talk about those. And, we'll, and you know, on this channel, I'm a big investor in people. You get the right people with the right history and the right abilities, and you can make anything work. And I think this is a really solid team. And then lastly, we'll go into the FAQ. So how much is required to stake an EarthNode, right? 100,000, just so you know. When will I receive it? Uh, after you've created your vault. What's a vault? It's an encrypted home for your personal information, email identity. But remember, uh, this is built on the Cardano Foundation and the Cardano blockchain. Uh, what's the conversion rate? The conversion rate is calculated when you are at the front of the queue and click buy tokens. Again, this is the pre-sale and everything else. Uh, we can't do that, but you can sign up just by clicking on the buy tokens and off you go. And then uh, when will the mainnet be launched? Q4 2021 to Q1 2022. So uh, that is exactly around the time that Cardano is going to be releasing those smart contracts. So I think it's going to be great time. Which wallets are supported? You must use a Cardano wallet that supports native tokens such as Daedalus or Yolroy. Don't ex we do not support Cardano addresses from exchanges. Great. If you're looking for a video on how to use those wallets, just go to Dan Teaches Crypto, click on Ada Staking, and you'll find exactly out how. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the last part. So then the this is the team. And... Mickey's been in telecommunications for uh, 20 years, and this is a trillion dollar industry. Al and Andrew Soper, uh, RJ, and all these guys, uh, KTOs and CTOs and developers and everything that you wanna have to make a business run. So I'm gonna let Mickey talk to, uh, talk to you about those guys. And uh, just to finish up, I think this is a, a pretty fantastic project and uh, uh, full transparency. When I can get in, I will get into this project. So let's talk to Mickey. All right, buddy. So we took a look exactly what uh, World uh, Mobile actually is and uh, how things are kind of, you know, integrating and some of the tokenomics and everything else. So what I did was I reached out uh, to Mickey Watkins. He is the CEO. And I brought him on just to talk to us about exactly, you know, what is going on with this, with this project. But more importantly, because statistically, if you're watching this video, you're from U.S., Australia, Canada, U.K., and different parts. So we really don't know the struggles that are going on uh, globally with people who are not connected. So, Mickey, give us like a, a thousand foot overview about what is going on as far as uh, the underserved, underbanked, and underprivileged for telecommunications. Okay, so half the world's connected. Um, 3.7 billion people are not. There's a thousand mobile network operators connecting the already connected, and there's zero connecting the unconnected. Big tech companies like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft, they've managed to reach that far, um, but there's been a problem with sustainability. And this has left the, half the world offline and disenfranchised and uh, the other side, the wrong side of the digital divide. 
What does that mean for you? It means that without internet, life is very difficult to live. Without internet, it's like you can't check your emails, you can't check health, you can't further yourself. There's nothing quick can, can happen. You can't register your land. What we found is that by giving people internet, they all of a sudden start to develop in a different pace than you could ever imagine. When you give people internet and then you give them ID on top of the internet, then we're in a position where they're able to access the same services and the same tools that we don't even understand that we have. There's a stark contrast here. You've got us in the connected world that carry our phones, sleep with our phones, sleep with it next to the bed. We're, com we're consistently connected. Um, the mobile network operator knows everything that we do. We've, we've even almost sold out for the, the, to be connected in the conquest to have a faster internet. On the other side of the world, no one's connected. So we're trying to bridge that. We're trying to bring that to become closer and uh, to, to bridge that digital divide and to, to allow people to, to be strong and have the same services to the same set of tools, the same access to the same set of tools and services we have. Yeah, it's amazing because like, I mean, I don't, I don't realize it myself. And when I listen to uh, Charles Hoskinson talk about it, he goes, look, he goes in parts of Africa or sub-Saharan sub Africa, everybody that's over there, they don't have access to a lot of different financial institutions and things that we just take for granted and just, you know, connectivity. He goes, so what we're going to do is we're going to set them up with blockchain and they're just going to leapfrog this middle part and just go to where we all should be anyhow. So like when I saw this, I'm like, well, this is a, a pretty good partnership. So Mickey, just talk us through real quick about how the idea came about and then just a little bit of history and then we'll go into the whole team because on this channel, I always talk about the same thing. Uh, you know, dollar cost average, invest in people and things usually work themselves out. So just real quick, Mickey, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Sure, so I've been in telecommunications for the last 20 years. Uh, for the last six or seven years, um, I've been concerned about our privacy and the way that mobile network operators operate. Telecoms are tanking, revenues are falling and mobile operators are having to find a way to to further monetize um, their customer base. For us, we don't find that acceptable. And we also see that this is because the market is massively saturated with too many players, but yet there's the other half of the world that's unconnected. So as I was searching, um, how would I bring privacy solutions to the, to the world and how would people you know, adopt these? I realized that we're not really prepared to give up the things that we've got, the certain messengers or the OTT apps. But if we come to Africa, uh, in particular, with Sub-Saharan Africa, less than um, with more than a billion people, uh, and less you know less than 200 million connected, less than 800 million people unconnected. It's a lot of people. Um, I would be able to fix two wrongs: one, self-data governance and economic freedom of choice, and two, the ability to deliver a model that could connect the unconnected and give a brand new world to those that didn't have internet before. Makes a lot of sense. And this is, this is the thing where I, there's, there's two types of, of people that I think will be uh, excited about this project. The one side would be the people who are like, you know what, this is going to change uh, a lot of people's lives and this is, this is good. And the other people uh, could be like, you know what, I'm getting on the ground floor. This sounds like a good type of business. Again, this is a financial opinion, not a financial advice. Do your own research or just use some of mine that, uh, that we go through. So it makes a lot of sense. So Mickey, thanks for answering that part. The bigger thing, though, is tell us about your team. Tell us how we're going to get there. Because, I mean, these are all great ideas. And you've already, it looks like you've already established a, a couple of different uh, ones there in Africa. Tell yes. us about your team and how you're going to build and scale. So we're starting in East Africa because the demand is the most. It's where the people need it the most. But we're also starting there because we're very strong. We're strong on a regulation level when we're strong on a deployment level. These are two skills that you need to, to have massively if you want to, to create a new type of mobile network that nobody's succeeded in creating before. So on the core team, we have um, an incredible CTO, Antonio Hernandez. He is responsible for developing one of the um, most used campsites uh, in the world, uh, huge loads. He's also um, the, the former developer of the Euro Millions website. Um, we have Javi uh, Santos. He is also um, he, uh, our tech lead, has a lot of experience with digital identity. We have, yeah, as you can see there on the, on the left-hand side, we've got RJ. So RJ is actually based in, in East Africa. Uh, he rolled out with Microsoft using the TV white space project. He has connected hundreds and hundreds of schools, uh, built a mesh network with World Mobile that's connected three universities, um, over 60,000 people. Uh, you've got Andrew Soper on the top right there. Um, he is Mr. Renewable Energy in East Africa. 
uh, with the XPRIZE project. Um, he's, he's built everything and has been a major provider for, for backup battery for mobile network operators on the ground. So we have the renewable energy, which is core. We have the people that can lay down the mesh infrastructure, which is core. We have Alan Omnet, Omnet which you're, you're hovering over there. Uh, he's, he's our COO. Everything sticks with Alan. He's, he's developed solutions for over 100 different uh, companies, uh, Hertz, Virgin Mobile, and many others. Um, you have me and you have my brother Josh, and we, you know, we, we've been in telecoms for a long time. And the rest of the team is just as proficient and incredible as us. You've got David, if you scroll down, uh, and, and Vinay, the Repair Brothers. You've got Chris Watson, he's an advisor to the World Bank. On the left hand side there, you've got Slim Aluni, he's the pioneering the next generation of telecoms in university. He's a doctor. On the right hand side there, you've got Mamadou Traore. Rene Poisson. I mean, this is a team of people who have been involved in telecommunications and the corporate commercial side and rollout side for the last 20 years, the forefathers. And uh, we all uh, combined, we all have one, one mission. That is to, to solve a problem that is the world's biggest problem. Connect the Uncle Lee. Yeah, and that's the big thing, right? If we can just get uh, a lot of uh, the, the people that we surround ourselves with is not a guarantee for success, but it can show us pretty much where we're going to go and potentially head to. All right, Mickey. Well, listen, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just wanted to get in here and just talk about a great project. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to actually give back and to actually do well. Do, do good, then do well, right? That's what we talk about. And then uh, we do the same thing here, Digital Asset News. We have our D News stake pool. And every epic for the Cardano uh, staking, we give, uh, we put uh, 100 ADA into kiba.org to give for microloans in Sub-Saharan Africa, Central America, and South America. So uh, it's a good thing. I think we can do both at the same time. Anyhow, Mickey, any last words of wisdom for everybody? Yes, definitely. Um, I've been involved in commercial telecommunications, role, like I said, for the last 10 years, um, bridging borders, finding, finding effective ways. The one thing that I've realized is that the institutions and the mobile network operators alone cannot fix this problem. It's too big. We need to introduce a sharing economy, and the sharing economy starts on the ground in Tanzania, Zanzibar, and Kenya, but it also starts in the clouds with earth node operators um, who are able for the first time to participate in a real world telecommunications setup and actually earn rewards from that. So my, my belief is that together we're able to fix this problem. So the, the, the support, whatever you can do, whatever, whatever you can do to make this awareness that half the world is unconnected, whatever you can do to to, to support this, this mission, it's very important. Every one in two people can't communicate with each other. Every one in two people can't take part in the world as, as a whole. It's of a great benefit for all of us as a, as a planet to connect everybody and to, um, to bring a brand new world to the, to the world that isn't online right now. I like the mission. All right, Mickey, thanks so much for, for being. Follow up with you in a couple of months or so. And we'll see how things are coming and uh, we'll bring you back. Thanks for coming by. We all so appreciate much. it. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Okay, so that's it. So I want to thank Mickey for coming by and explaining to us about the project and where things are going and, and more importantly, the team. Because again, as I've stayed in this channel uh, time and time again, if you just look at the team and who's behind it, you can see not if it's just a great idea, but where that idea could actually go because of the history and the structure of the team behind it. And uh, I think this is a fantastic project. Now we'll definitely be getting in at some point. Unfortunately, I live in the United States and that's just how it goes. Uh, and then lastly, as far as uh, for paid promotions, every time I get a paid promotion on this channel, I must tell you it's a paid promotion, I must click the box or YouTube can ban my channel. And this was uh, not a paid promotion. I just think it is a fantastic project that can do two things at once. And uh, I'm excited about it. So we'll bring Mickey back in uh, a couple of, uh, maybe a month or so and just see how things are going. But uh, again, I think it's great. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That helps consider subscribing. Also share it. I mean, if you think that this is a really good project, share with the people that you know, share the people that you might want to uh, take a deeper, harder look at it. And that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.